Dr. Murray and this is Studio 56 and today I'm going to be chatting with the lovely, the amazing, the super talented David Morales and uh, David's going to be talking about creating a field journal. David is a Colombian architect and a notebook artist based between Barcelona and his hometown pronounced Ibegay. He can correct me if I've said that wrong. He feels deeply passionate about the beauty in worldly things, and he tries to capture them in his notebooks. So let's welcome David into our call. David, could you turn on your camera, please? Hello, there Brenda. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Great to see Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to be showing everyone your gorgeous art. I mean, I think probably a lot of the people on this call are already familiar with your art, but there might be some new people who are going, okay, who is this guy? Let's see his art. <laughs> and they're going to love it. They're really going to love it. Um, so David, um, tell me about one day, one drawing, and how that got started. Okay. Well, this is pretty funny because in 20. 2018, I have this friend of mine. He got this, uh, he made this um, uh, challenge, which he took a picture every day of that year in 20, 2017. And at the end of the year, he said, oh, this is really, really hard because I didn't know what to do every, every day. See, are you kidding me? A picture every day, that is really easy. So I cannot, I, I can like really, you know, like uh, cocky and, and, and I say, I'm going to do it uh, with the drawing. I'm going to do one, one drawing every day for the next year. And he went like, no, it, I mean, that is not, it's impossible. You won't do it. So I started and, and that's how, how I started. I just started the first year and I decided to share it on Instagram because I believe um, that when you when you tell people about your challenges, it makes make you compromise more with them. It's like it's like when you said that you are on a diet, but if you don't tell anyone, you could just like break it in the second day. But if you yeah. tell everyone, it, everybody will know, and they 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 they, they will ask you, how do you do with your challenge? So yeah. I start like you know ch sharing my 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 drawings every day in, in Instagram, and I finished the first year uh, with a pretty big community uh, coming to, to my, to my uh, Instagram profile. And I, at the end of the year, I show my work in New York and, and um, uh, Sugar Leaf uh, uh, called me from New York and they, they, they asked me to send a, a, a notebook and they make this, this, this show with, the, with another artist. And I said, this is so awesome. I need to do it again. So yeah. I repeated it the next year and I did it for four years. And this is the first year that I'm not doing like, no, it's, it's not that I'm not sketching every day, but I'm not posting every day because I needed a break, but I kind of miss it. And, and I'm thinking that maybe next year I'm going to go back and start again because uh, I number it. I, I, I went like from one from 365 and one uh, for three, you know, two and, 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 I, and I did the 360. Uh, five challenge for four years. Yeah, that, that, that was that was the the, the, the project. I said it was really nice because it helps you to improve. It gives oh, yeah. you like uh even there were days that, that I, I didn't want to or I felt like sick uh, for whatever reason. I I did it and that was pretty hard. But well now i now I know that I can, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah. okay, I'm not a math person, but that's 14 160 that's 1460 <laughs> sketches consecutively every day in a row yeah 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 oh my gosh oh my god yeah that's it is pretty crazy <laughs> it is pretty crazy but at the end um because i already use uh sketchbooks before i mean when i was in college i used to sketch buildings uh because there was uh i was in architecture school and that was the thing that I was interested in. So when I when I started, I started sketching buildings. Okay, I mean like doing indoor uh, architecture or whatever. But then I, I realized it was really hard because you need a lot of time to do that, to move away from because I mean away from my office or away from home. Uh, so I start doing like another kind of things. But what I wanted to say is that at the end, 
this is like uh, my diary. It's like a journal. I mean, you can go through my sketchbooks. I know exactly. Now I know it. I, I got like this memory. It's like a graphic graphic memory. Because yeah. now I open a sketchbook and I I see the date and I see what I what I sketched that day and I can connect uh, things and I know exactly what happened that yeah. week and everything because of the drawings. I just, I mean, I, and I love the, the that feeling of going back in time. I, actually, I, I try, I, I called him like my, my little time machines, you know, because you go back in time when you, when you go, you, when you flip the, the pages, you know. I was just thinking, you know, um, for people who get, when you get older, older people, we lose our memories. It just, everything becomes foggier, right? As you get older. And I was just thinking, my gosh, it's like therapy for older people that somebody should, someone should do that because I mean, you would remember things so much better. It is something special about drawing because yeah. I always said the same thing, but if I stare at you for two hours, either or I'm drawing you or I'm in love with you. I mean, there's no other yeah. way of me sitting in front of you for two hours and looking at you, looking at a building, looking at a plan, looking whatever I'm, I'm, I'm sketching. This relationship between that thing and me yeah. Mm -hmm. is and and it is in this stays forever i mean yeah. i go through my uh, maybe my first sketchbook is from 1997 uh because i came to europe for the first time that year when i was in college so i sketched a lot of things a lot of business that i was interested in that, as i said before and i can go through that that sketchbook i can even remember the music that i was listening while i was sketching those buildings yeah. i mean it is really it's, it's really time matching. So I recommend everyone to yeah. do it because it, it, it's not even about how beautiful the drawing is. I mean, yeah. it doesn't even matter. It's just a diary. It's, it's, just, it's just like if you were writing everything that was happened to you. I and mean, it, it's not about it's not about poetry. It's just about um, collecting your 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 memories in a sketchbook. And that is the beautiful thing about it, you know. Yeah. Wow, that you're it's so true. I mean, I really hadn't thought about it much, but uh, you know, you're a person who's actually done it, so you really know, and uh, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, there's another thing that is really beautiful that I, that I that I since since I had to sketch it like every day, I needed like different subjects. Uh, one of those subjects, of course, was my family, even though I am I'm, I'm a terrible uh, uh person drawer, I mean, I just I mean, it's so difficult because I, I, I was always training, training it on uh, sketching buildings because that, that, that was, that's what I used to do. And I always put like how old they are, how old my kids are when I sketch them. And I know in 30 years, they will look at that and they will remember how, yeah. how I mean, how I saw them, how I, you know, and I just, I just, Given the chills, just like when, when I think about it, it's just like so beautiful to just to capture that moment and and and, and 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 you put it there forever, and then you will not be here. I will not be here, but then they they can see it, and their children can see it. I mean, I, I don't know. There's something magical about it. There is. It's a gift. I mean, oh my gosh, I I can't imagine what it would be like to have a father who's a sketcher who sketched me so many times as I was growing up it would and then to look back at it after he's gone I, that would be so um like such a special connection I think so good for you David that's lovely that's really lovely <laughs> thank you yeah good, to, good for them <laughs> <laughs> I know. yeah well, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a saying here at home because I, I sketch my boys but every time I sketch my wife they say she looks like a turtle I don't know why. I mean, it looks like, it's so like a turtle, you know, an, an animal a turtle. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny. But I try to sketch her, but she never comes out like I'm. I, I mean, she she always say, like, "Do you do you think that I'm like that?" I say, "No," but I just can't do it right. But I keep trying. I keep trying. Maybe one day she come out like she is. <laughs> how, you know how beautiful she is. Well, okay. Well, with no, without further ado, we should get to your sketches. But I just want to say that there's a couple of sketches in there of your son, and I think, wow, he's a good-looking guy. Like that's a beautiful <laughs> is, sketch. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. 
But they really the captured day, him. The, the other day I sent them to him, like a bunch of them, and I say, uh, show it to your friends and 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 um talk about your dad. I was saying because because they they always make fun of me because I have uh like much more followers than them. So I'm the I'm at home, I'm the influencer, you know, so they make fun of me. So I was telling him, show, show to your friends. I yeah. was saying, no, I'm not going to show anything uh, uh, to, to my friends. I mean, they're, those are horrible. And I was saying, okay, <laughs> okay, don't show it to them. They're uh, not. Yeah, no, they're Everyone, not. Everyone, you should know, they're not. We're going to look at them in a minute. <laughs> and he has very good looking fun. And, uh, and the sketches are gorgeous. So it's just kids. You know what? It's just kids. I have more followers than my kids do as well. And they're pretty popular, so <laughs> it just, it's just what we're doing. That's all. Well. Anyway, yeah, no. so let's get uh, let's uh, um, turn off our cameras now, and we will look at your sketches. And uh, if people have questions, you can put them in the Q and A box. And uh, and I know that David would be happy to answer your questions. Definitely. Now, open this up. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. So um, <laughs> Lydia says, oh my gosh, I have so many questions. I drew daily. He drew daily. And was he able to post every day also? And can we see one of his most simplest drawings, like when he didn't have the energy, you didn't feel like drawing? Uh, his oh yeah, definitely. Says, Lydia says, your talk is already so inspiring. So Lydia, um, just uh, just to say, uh, um, David has given me uh, 15 uh, sketches that we're going to look through, and I'm not sure that they are necessarily his simplest drawings that he did when he didn't have the energy or didn't feel like drawing, but maybe, um, maybe David, you could, uh, you could look and see if you have. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I can go through some sketchbook that I, that I have here and, and. And I have a, a little one when I don't have time, or maybe when I when I when I don't feel like doing uh, more than thirty minutes, uh, I use I, I used to do that one. So I can I can I can go through some of yeah. the things that I have here. This is from '97 when I wasn't when, when I wasn't when I was going to college, and you can see that I was all interested in interested in architecture and everything and the details and in how uh, how the buildings were, uh, how tall they were and, and the details about the street. And I used to write a lot on, on, on my sketchbooks. And that was just when I was living in, in, in Bogota. And this is, yeah, this is from when I was through it, going through my last, uh, my last year of college. Okay, gorgeous. Really cool. So you would have had to extrapolate this based on what you're looking on at since you were above looking down. Yeah, I know that, that that one was made on the street. Looking and look at the buildings. Just imagine how they look uh, from above. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, yeah. The other ones you know, were just the, the, the one that has the, the, the houses. I mean, actually, that was the, 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 the place in the city that, what, that, that was going to do the building for my, my final work on, 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 on college. So I was like um, studying how all this part of the city uh, had changed in time and, you know, all, all things about to understand. And that, 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 that's, that's another thing, that, like really important thing that, that, that came from, from that time is to understand what you're drawing. It's yeah. just the same thing that I uh, talked before. I mean, you're staying there for two, three hours or maybe a day drawing and what you draw, you understand you, because you're, for example, uh, you, when you take a picture, you don't even count the windows of the building, but when you draw, you have to count them. You have, and you understand how the, the, the designer, um, how, or maybe you can think about the intentions he had when he designed the building, you know? And mm -hmm. from drawing, you learn all the stuff. And it's so different that, than taking a picture. It's, it's, it's just another uh, universe. It's, it's totally true. I think, uh, you know, when I'm traveling, uh, if I sit down and I, I spend half a day just drawing, 
you know, in one location. I know that I haven't seen everything that there is to see in that beautiful city, wherever I am. But the thing that I did see, I really saw it. I mean, I yeah. really looked at it. I really saw it. And I've got probably a lot of it memorized and I really know it. Whereas if I had run all around that city for the same amount of time, I would have glanced at things. I would have seen things, but I probably really wouldn't remember them. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm um, sorry, we didn't quite answer Lydia's question. Um, she, and that's because we were, we had some tech things. I apologize. Um, so Lydia was asking, do, it, you drew daily. Uh, were you able to post every day also? Oh yeah, I post. Uh, yeah, I suppose I did it. Sometimes I just, I just sk uh, skip it because I didn't have time for, for example, to finish and I finished the next day, I came back to the place the next day or, or I took a picture to finish it. And then the next day I did two posts, for example. Uh, but at the, end of the, at the end of the year, I had the 365 and I didn't jump more than three days. Yeah, posting. Cool, yeah. super cool. All right. So, sorry, half of this is sideways, but <laughs> that's okay. yeah, yeah. That's it. That's that's. I believe the same year, ninety seven. Uh, that's my trip to to Florence, and this is very. I mean, it changed my life actually because I met my wife there, my oh, wow. actual wife. <laughs> so and 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 that view that was from the flat that I rent. I mean, I, I actually I rent I rent a, a a room in the flat, and my wife was doing an Erasmus exchange program uh, that she came from Barcelona to Florence, and she rent the other room, and that view was from the kitchen uh, of the of the of the of the flat. So it's like a very important uh, view from from me, you know, for me. And for your whole life, my gosh, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and you know i mean i i, I keep saying the same it just uh i used to write uh a lot of things that i that i, that I was thinking uh at the moment uh the things that, I, that was happening around me and maybe about the architecture um i'm not sure what it says right now but but it, it should be about the field yeah i i love the handwriting uh, somebody else mentioned the handwriting is super cool. I think this is the kind of handwriting I see it all the time with um, people who have architectural training. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's not the first person that said that to me. I mean, I know there's a lot of art, uh, a lot of architectures, uh, architects that uh, write uh, kind of the same. There's yeah. a there's a book. There's a book. Uh, it's a chain. It's called the chain book. Um, and there's there's this kind of uh, handwriting. And we studied that in our in the school. Is this a is this a book that anybody could buy? Oh yes, uh, I will send you the link later on because uh, the other day someone asked me and I, and I looked for it. It says uh, the author is uh, his last name is Ching, uh, C H I N G, I believe. Is it and... Frank Ching? Oh, uh, not I'm not, I'm not sure. From, I think he's from Seattle. He's an architecture prof. Well, actually, it's a really cool book and with a lot of uh, uh, nice drawing, architecture drawings and how to do it. And I will try to look for it uh, later on and, and I will send it to you and maybe we can post it somewhere uh, yeah. or put it on the comments and, 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 and people can take a look up. Yeah, I, I, you know what, I have a feeling it's Frank Ching, because I met Frank Ching in, whew, I think, Barcelona about five years ago, and he was at an Urban Sketcher Symposium, and everybody okay. said, oh, this is Frank Ching, he's a famous architect, and, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's who it is. Wow, that would yeah. be so cool, but, but I'm not sure if, if, if that's his uh, first name. Yeah, okay. Anyway, um, so this is Florence and gorgeous. Yes. Sketches, and you've totally inspired me because I'm just about to launch a new workshop in Florence with Hazel Sohn. So I'm very excited. Um, but uh, yeah. Mary, Do I get to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want to. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, Fl Florence is just so, such a beautiful place. Just an incredible place. Just unbelievable. 
So a couple of people here have said that it is Frank Ching in Seattle. He's a professor uh, at the University of Washington and somebody gave a link to him. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's who it is. And I'm going to definitely look up that book. Do you remember what the book was called? <sighs> Something like a space and order. But, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't remember. It was 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I will, look, <laughs> I, will, I will look for it. Definitely, I will send you the, the, the link and we can put it in the comments. Yeah, okay, no problem. Anyway, let's see these sketches. Where are we here? To get control of my cursor. All right, here we go. Gorgeous. Do you use color? Okay. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, this is this is the same year, and there were like actually I, I drew a lot that year, and you can see, for example, the proportions are a little bit right uh, or, or better than the other ones because I was practicing a lot, um, and these are two like really iconic buildings in Bogota, and I just uh, the, the house. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a brick house and it's just very, very, very nice house. The one that I just, you know, remember uh, a lot from, from the city. And, and I did it, I did it for the same work that I was doing to understand the, 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 the zone that, that I was working on the city. Uh, several people have commented um, <clears throat> and that the uh, book that you're probably talking about is called architecture form space and order by francis ching yeah yeah that's that's what it is yeah and i had the opportunity i met him a few wow years ago. Yeah, wow. yeah yeah wow i should i should get him in here for uh an interview um and uh, his wife his lovely wife as well i remember we hung out i think that was in um i think that was in barcelona um anyway wow. so gorgeous sketches here um uh, David, now, do you uh, are you a black and white only person, or do you use color? I'm sorry. I just okay, yeah, no, I mostly use black and white, but it's just for one reason. Since I and since college, there's always a sketchbook on my back. If you don't have a bag, it's in my it's in my hand, and I want to go light always. So I have just like a pencil, a fine liner, and my sketchbook. If, right. you're, if you're at home, I use watercolors, actually watercolors, most, uh, but I have to be like comfortable. I mean, I like to be comfortable when, 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 when I sketch. I mean, uh, now, I, now I have a little uh, seat that is also with me all the time and the cameras because uh, I want to, to, to record what I'm doing and my back is getting bigger, but I'm not a watercolor, I mean, an outside watercolor uh, sketcher. Okay. I just, I don't know. I, I haven't got used to it. Yeah. So you like to do that later? Uh, yeah, but most of the time I do the, the black and white. I mean, I, when I do watercolor, I sketch things on the, at home and I have this other project called uh, the uh, Botanical Expedition around my house, which because I, I, I fly a lot to Colombia, I mean, I live between Colombia and Barcelona mostly Barcelona than Colombia, but before I was like living the whole time in Colombia for the last seven years. And, and I, you know, the, 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 the fruits and the plants are so different there than here. So mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what I like to sketch at home. So I sketch whatever vegetable is that we're going to eat and all the kind of things. And that's when I use coal and I use the water coal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I remember now all the vegetables that are colored. Yeah. That's so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Mary, who's in this call, is from Seattle, and she's saying that she sketches regularly with Frank Ching. Good for you, MK. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we have people in this call who know people, David. You should be impressed. Yeah. Uh, please <laughs> tell him that he inspired me so much. I mean, I got so inspired by him when I was in college. And actually, I still have his book, and, but it's in Colombia. I mean, I, I, I left there because I, I, I didn't bring it with me. 
but I know what it is. And I have this uh, this kid that went through uh, college uh, recently, and I and I gave it to him, and he gave it, he he gave it uh, back to me. And, and when he gave it back to me, I, and and I asked him to do it to someone who could need it. Uh, so I got I know where my book is. So so I mean I'm I'm really inspired by that. <laughs> that's, that's so cool. So uh, Pablo says, um, good afternoon, David and Brenda. So exciting to hear from you guys. I have a question. How do you get textures for things like water and vegetations to look so natural? Sometimes I just can't get the textures right. Any tips? Yeah. For example, if you look at these, these uh, sketches, I'm very interested in architecture. If you see the, 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 the trees and, and the plants here, are just like a very, very sketchy. I mean, uh, so you can you can render them in so many different ways. For example, I'm not paying attention on this uh, uh, on this uh, particular sketch. I'm not paying attention to the trees. But if I am, I mean, you have to look. I mean, you have to be uh, so aware about the values. What makes a tree a tree, or what makes Actually, everything is it's the shadows, it's the is the depth, and you have to be very aware about it. And we, maybe we can see another an, later on. We can see another another sketches. Um, but but I try to pay attention to the darker uh, part of the sketch and the lighter part, and use this, the, the 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 cross hatching, which I, I was not using quite much here in this sketch. When, I mean, twenty years ago, I, I wasn't using that much, the, 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 the cross hatching is, is almost just one, one direction hatch. If you, if you look at these at this sketches, then I start like uh, doing the cross hatch and with the cross hatch, you can do all the values between the light part and the dark part. And all this will make a little bit more of sense in, 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 in another sketches that, that, will, that, that we'll see. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> And I have another question here from Carolyn, who says, do you use line variations to give a sense of light and weight? Uh, yes, but the line variation, I use it to get faster to the darker values. Right. Uh, when, when I use the line variation, as he said, is more like when in like, like this, like this uh, breakfast uh, a sketch is more like a comic. I mean, in that particular sketch, I'm not trying to capture reality. I'm trying just to capture the moment and just uh, sketching very fast. Uh, this is this is a, a sketchbook from Japan. I went in 2018. I went uh, with my dad in, on, a, on a trip to Japan, and that was while I was doing my 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 challenge. So I sketch like every day. And some days we had to just like uh, go early to whatever. So I did this kind of really fast sketch while we were, we were uh, having our breakfast. And it's just to remember what we had. You know, it's just like, I know there was this uh, like, um, this, how do, you, how do you call these kind of soups? You know, that you put oh, water, yeah. put in the microwave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yes. and, and yeah, the, this noodle soup uh, and 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 the milk and and I, and, I, and and when I when I go uh, travel, I put all these uh, tickets and whatever things that I get travel because we have a lot of, and bright things and it becomes my 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 daily journey album at the end of the trip, you know. Yeah, cool, super cool. And this is this is uh, day one in Tokyo. So I put, you know, what where we walk and, and, and the coffee we took and the ramen we ate and they have all these stamps and I put stamps uh, everywhere and just to remember a thing and, and, and the tickets, how, how, thing, how much uh, the things cost and, you know, it's just to fill with everything that, that happened that day. Yeah. I, I love, already love your sketchbooks because there's something happy about them and I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and but it's also like uh, you're just sharing these little things, these little, you know, domestic things, part of your life, your coffee, your ramen. And also, I love the map and it's even got the weather. You can see, oh, it was raining. <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah, it, 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 
when we came back to the hotel, and now that I see it, I remember it. It, it was raining when we came back all the all the all the uh, and, 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 and that uh, particular path, and uh, someone asked before how look uh, when I don't have time or when it, when I don't feel like uh, 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 sketching, and it would look something like, for example, I didn't sketch all that in one time. In the morning, we have the coffee, and I sketch, I sketch the coffee, and then I sketch the ramen at midday, and then at night, I day, I, I did the man. So that's like the like three different times, three different moments of the day, you know. So because sometimes it's not that easy uh, to sketch when you're traveling with someone that doesn't sketch, because my dad wasn't sketching. I mean, yeah. so I I need to find the time to do my my, my challenge while. He was waiting for me because I was the one that the, the, the was in charge of almost everything because he's a 75 uh, year old guy who wants his son to do almost everything when we travel. So he was expecting for me to do to do things and I needed the time to sketch. So I just took like, you know, 20 minutes uh, while he was having his coffee and then another 20 minutes uh, while he was uh, eating his ramen. And at the end of the day, when he was tired, I did the map. So yeah. uh, this is how I handle it. Yeah, that's fantastic. You are a good son, David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the same trip. And this one in particular was, I sketched really fast in, 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 in pencil what it was uh, uh, seen in that scene. And I took a picture and I finished it at night at the hotel. Right. Because it was very, very uh, cr uh, crowded and I couldn't uh, uh, stay there with, 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 with my dad all the time. So yeah. I took a picture and I finished it when I was at home. Wow. It's incredible the depth that you were able to achieve in this uh, one sketch. My God. Yes. And yes, it's, it's just it's just this. This is cross hatching. I mean, the, the earlier uh, sketches were not. And this is just, you achieve that just by uh, adding lines in a different direction. Yeah. And you have these four directions, you know, vertical, horizontal, and two diagonals. And then with that, you will get all the values. Yeah. It's crazy. It's amazing. It, it, it's really a great job. Yeah. Super cool. I love it. Oh, I have to say something about, because, uh, well, you, you will see. Then, in the beginning, when I was in college, uh, one of my favorite art artists was uh, uh, Gustav Klim and Egon Yeah. Uh, and he used to sign his name on a on a square, just like Klim. They they used to put their name into a box, like like so this down here. Yeah, like that. So in in. When I was in college, I used to put my name like that, uh, all my name and the date, I mean, the year. And I kept doing it for many years until I went to Japan and, in fact, and, and found out that they did, they have this stem, like culture, yeah. like, yeah. and they, they call it Hanko. So I got my Hanko in, I, I got the Hanko idea in Japan. And then I understood from, where they, they they got it from and I got it from them and they got it from Japan and then all everything got like like a circle history and I got my own handle then after, after after I went to that trip. So then you see then you see the, the stamp on the other on the old on the later and latest uh sketches. I love it. I I've, I've seen that lots of people do that and I, I really love it. I don't do that but I'm getting inspired that maybe I need to do that mm -hmm. too. <laughs> There's another thing that I that I like to do uh, to grab nature and just to put it on on, on, on on the on the sketches just just to 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 remember the place and you know just like like uh, like um, souvenir you know yeah no that's super cool so a uh, couple questions here Pablo is asking he says beautiful drawing how do you know when to use different kinds of lines like diagonal or vertical to achieve volume like the ones you do um, here on the rocks I mean. For example, for me, I always start with the with the vertical lines because they are easier for me to do. And uh, from I don't know, from college, I used to do my my sky 
I used to do vertical lines in, in, on the sky. And those, I, I suppose, because I, I have practiced those kind of lines more than the others, I always start with the vertical lines. And then I do the diagonal. And then I do the other, but, but it's just me. I mean, it's just you start like doing your lines and getting the depth just step by step. It's just like watercolor because there's always a transparency between the layers, you know? It's just, you put the line and then you put the other one the other side and you cannot undo the ones that you did uh, before. So it's just like layer by layer, you will, under, you will be getting the volumes. Yeah. I, I love it. It's so cool. And I love the sky with the with the vertical lines. That's uh so Yeah, me too. That, that, that is something that I, I and there's a lot of people that does it. I, I and I don't remember, but may, maybe it comes from the chain book. Okay, I'm going to definitely have to get that chain book. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is uh, this is a plane from Barcelona to, to Bogota. A lot of hours. And before they turn the light off, I just have this. this, this just, you know, you just to kill the time. To yeah. That. It's same great. thing. Same is 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 lines. It's just uh, cross hatching. Yeah. How you get how you get the the, the, the depth. I think you're the king of cross hatching. <laughs> Thank you. There's a lot of things. That, 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 there's a lot of types of cross hatching uh, because. Some people do like small uh, short lines and they cross hatch like in short. And I like to do it really long just to get like the unify everything by doing it in long lines. And I think a lot about it. I mean, when I, when I start like uh, hatching, I think a lot about the direction, especially if they just have one direction. As you see, for example, in the left uh, part of the plane, it's um, it's just like a diagonal, and then on the on the roof of the plane is diagonal on the other uh, on the other direction. Because maybe I thought they will be, they will get crossed in some point, and I didn't want to um, uh, have the same direction. I don't know. Maybe I was thinking about that, but that's that's how I. It, but it's not it's not the right way to do it. It's just my way to do it. Well, I'm not sure that there is a necessarily a right way and a wrong way, uh, right? It's art, so you can do it however you like. Um, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Oh, wow, this is super cool. I love it. Beautiful. This is, wow. a, yeah, this is, this is <laughs> actually between the plane and these uh, are maybe three years of practice. So you can see the evolution. Yeah. You can see you can see uh, how I work on the depth of of of, of the of the. Uh, I mean, this is my neighbor's garden. She is ninety years old, maybe eighty nine, and she got the most beautiful garden uh, in the front yard because uh, well, she's got this little tree that had more than hundred than a hundred years old that was. Uh, planted by her uh, grandma who lived in that house yeah. and and then it changes because um, I don't know the name in, 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 in English but in Spanish it's called capuchinas the, the, the plant that is that is there that does, has these orange uh, flowers that you can eat and it's so beautiful in, in, in the spring and then it changes and then uh, one of those trees is a bougainvillea. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a red bougainvillea, and in summer it gets really red. And I don't know. I just love it, and I had to. I had to do it. I mean, just I just love this her garden. It's a yeah. little jewel that we have here on the street. So, uh, <clears throat> David, are you fast when it comes to doing all this hatching? Because I would think that this no labor well, intensive. No. Well, actually, this is uh, an eight. A5 size, which yeah. uh, in horizontal A5 uh, uh, size, and it will take me each page around two hours. So this is like a four hour. Uh, work. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. would think so. Absolutely gorgeous. It's, I mean, the detail is so beautiful and so well done. Really, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. Thank you. 
I love and there's my and there's my hanko. Now you I mean you see now there's a stamp. It's not it's I, I don't write it every time anymore. I put my stamp on yeah on the page. Cool. Yeah. Well that saves you so much time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go faster by that. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. That's great. No, this is absolutely gorgeous, David. Really, really beautiful. And I love how it just in that top left corner there, it's just implied. It's just a suggestion that, you know, the street can yes. on and love. Yeah, you just, just, just because, I mean, my attention is on her garden. I mean, I just try to go really fast or sketchy on the other things. I mean, her door and those uh, cappuccino uh, plant in front, that's, that's, that's the main subject. Yeah, so oh, we have some really good questions here. Um, David, Car Carolyn is asking, do you draw the contour of the shapes first and then do the cross hatching or does cross hatching occur with the contour drawing in certain places? I kinda, I would say always, but not always, but most of the times I use uh, pencil lines. I do like basic pencil lines and I, I try to frame what I'm going to sketch because one of the things that I pay really attention to is how to frame it. Just when you take a picture, just, I mean, uh, these pictures are the one that you think about them. I mean, you, 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 you have to frame it. You have to know uh, how it's going to look. I, I, I won't say that I do it. I don't do a sketch. It's like, you know, uh, really quick and they they I don't frame them but most of the time especially when I know that I'm going to spend four hours I do a pencil lines and I know more or less where everything is going to be and once I have time and, and I have that in, in, in pencil I start doing my cross hatch and wow. yes sometimes I do the outline in 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 in, in, in ink in, in, in fine liner and then I start cross hatching but since there's there's a thing called the 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 negative space, which is when the blacks make the volume and 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 you you focus on on the shadows and on on the on, on the paper make makes the thing. In those cases, I try not to do lines because it will ruin the 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 negative space. I don't know if I explain myself. I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with the negative space uh, uh, concept, uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm Okay, so I am familiar with the negative space, but I'm not quite sure that I understand what you're saying. You're, you're saying you want to just leave that, the negative space yeah. white. Just uh, leave I'm it white. Gonna, I'm, uh, for example, yes. In, if you, if you see the bark of the, of the, of the bougainvillea, uh, which is just by the window, on, yeah. the, on the left or, or not on the right side of the window there's a yeah. shadow be, be, yeah that one there's a shadow behind oh. that makes this insane. but the 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 bar doesn't have the line it doesn't have the outline it's just the shadow the vertical shadow oh, right, that, right. Yeah. that makes it that makes it pop up right so if you, you define do, if you, the shape by the exactly background. exactly yeah. if you do the outline of that bar it will look uh so different so different because yeah. what i what i try to pop up is is something that is in light by doing the dark yeah cool. but i'm not aligning yeah 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 it is yeah. it is something you have to think about it you have to think when you when you're doing it because uh the natural uh uh thing that you want to do is to outline everything yeah so i some some things i know that i want to blind them because I won't be able to do the vertical, the, 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 the negative space. But when you're um, deciding where to put that negative space in the background, um, you, you probably need to make to draw your uh, tree in first with pencil, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's what I do. My gosh. My God. How long yeah. did this take you? This, this is... Uh, it has a beautiful story because this is uh, like a protected house in, in Ibagué, where, where, where I where we live, where I where I live all my life before I came to Europe. Uh, it's like a very important house, a beautiful house, and the owner, which was a, a, a an old lady, had died uh, in that year, maybe a couple months before I was invited 
to make a drawing of the house because I know the family and they, invite, they invited me because for Christmas they wanted to give all the, the brother and sister, the siblings, they wanted to do, they wanted to give them uh, a print. So I did another one. I mean, it is, it's not that one. So I asked him, the house was empty. It was all the, the, the people that served that old lady, the, the kind of rich, and they were in the house. So I was by myself sitting in, in this uh, beautiful porch and they were giving me coffee the whole morning. And I spent two mornings uh, there by myself in a beautiful weather and it, and it rained and it's all tropical. I mean, it's almost a jungle uh, and this house is, is in, in, in the middle of it. And there were just two just beautiful days there a sketching by myself. And wow. I just have this really nice uh, memory of those two days. Yeah, that's so cool, so cool. I love that. And you know what? I feel like you've chosen the sketches to show us based on the, not necessarily the sketch, but um, on this fabulous memory that you have. Like you, I can tell that you love certain sketches uh, more because there's this great memory attached to them. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, it, and as I said in the beginning, it doesn't have to, actually, this is a beautiful sketch. I mean, I, I can recognize it. They have like uh, some uh, perspectives problems and and something that I can that I could say I could I could do it better here or whatever, but I reckon I reckon that it's a beautiful sketch. But it's more the memory about it than the sketch. Yeah, I think so. It is stunning, stunningly gorgeous. I love this, beautiful. And Carolyn says, "Wow, such feeling and subtlety, so nice." Mm. Uh, this is this is part of my uh, botanical expedition around my garden. Uh, and I have this thing about it, which I, I, I mean, I wish I could be one of those uh, uh, drawers that came, went to America uh, on the 18th century to sketch uh, new uh, plants. I mean, it's just, and I try to look at them as if it was the first time that I see them. And I try to look the details and, and how it grows and how it works because every plant is different and you can understand a lot about it uh, by sketching them. And this is my monstera here in, the, here in our house. And I just sit there and just try to understand how it, it is because this is almost like faces when you miss uh, the proportion, it will be a totally different plant. It, will, it, it won't be because you know how it is you've seen it so many times and when you mistake uh you know uh that you're mistaken but when you draw it you you know where you're mistaken but you understood why and this is something uh that that, that i get a lot of uh, out of out of uh the drawing you know yeah so cool and i just even love the uh, the layout of it all mostly on one side of your sketch with a little bit on the other side and then you're Panko in the bottom. Yeah. That's yeah, same thing. Because it's just it's just about how how to frame it, how where you where to put it, because because you already have the frame, which is your sketchbook. And then I mean I could put it in the middle of it, but I just you know decided it looks better, just like when you take a picture, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, color. Yeah, <laughs> this is the same thing. This is this is my botanical expedition. Uh, this is in Colombia. Uh, uh, this is the mango, which I believe most of us uh, know what the mango is. And the other one is the mamoncillo, uh, which is we don't have it here. This is a thing that we eat. I ate it all a, a, a lot when I was little. And the beautiful thing about the community in 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 in, in Instagram, for example, is that I, that I. They ask people how how they call them, so I kind of then uh, go through the the, the comments, uh, getting all the names uh, from whatever they have this fruit. I put I put I I, I try to look for the botanical uh, name, the, ah. the scientific name, and people start telling me how they call it, and they start telling. A lot of things, and I learned so much about people saying things about the fruits that I that I that I, that I sketch, and that's how I kind of um, feel like I'm this uh, um, 
guy from the 18th century bringing uh, those drawings from the um, from America to Europe and show them to people that never uh, saw this before and learning uh, things about these uh, amazing uh, fruits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're learning the the names of the fruits in other languages then. Yes, and how people because for example, there's uh, I don't know the name of it, but in Spanish is anacardo, which comes from a fruit that we call marañón. But I didn't know the anacardo was that same fruit until I draw it, I sketch it, I put it online, and people start telling me what they did with that, how they the, how they eat it, and how they got the anacardo out of that fruit. And I just, I just, I, I don't know, my head just blew up by that information. I I, I ate that, 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 that fruit before, but never ate it that way. And I thought they were two different fruits. And it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing how, how, how you can get all this information together just by putting it online, you know? Yeah, it's amazing. So I have to mm -hmm. ask you about the materials that you used here. How are you getting this color on there? Yeah, this is watercolor. Uh, and uh, um, color pencils because I'm doing it on a paper, which is not, it, it doesn't uh, get that much water. So I'm just, um, uh, I have an, another sketchbooks that, 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 are, that are watercolor paper, uh, right. but not these ones. So I put some layers in watercolor and then I start adding, uh, details with the, uh, color pencils. Wow, it's beautiful. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. So, you know, so just, I mean, I love the simplicity of just this one fruit on the on each page, and uh, it's it's very cool. It's, it's very designery. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even care about the the, the shade, the the, the 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 shadows, for example, on the table and where they are. It's just it's just the fruit, and then just just fuck focus everything. Focus, focus on the element on the element on the element you know yeah it's just like you you could sketch anything i mean and this is what i learned from from a sketching every day that you could sketch everything how many times you have a pepper in front of you and you don't even think about it and you are thinking why should i why should i draw today i mean because we have this feeling that we have to draw something very important or or, or that you're making a piece of art and Everything is draw if that war exists. Yeah, I, it's so true. It's really true. It doesn't matter. And you know, the thing is, sometimes, you know, a thing that is not necessarily a beautiful object, if you draw it, it suddenly it looks so much more charming than it does in real life. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, these are beautiful. And this is my boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, when <laughs> when I when I sketch uh, in the beginning, I try not to do it now. But if yeah, if I want to do something like uh, hard to, I take a picture. Yeah. And I did that from the picture. Yeah. And yeah, he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but you can learn, you really can learn a lot from drawing from images. And if you aren't able to get outside or whatever, I don't have a problem with drawing from. Oh, you know, no, me either. Me either. I mean, and no, you can not learn at all. A lot. I yeah, think definitely. Sorry. No, no, I think definitely. I mean, I, yeah, you, you're right. I think, it, especially uh, drawing people. Uh, if you draw people from images, you're going to be a lot more familiar with the shapes and the proportions and so on. Uh, so that when you're drawing figures from life, it's just uh, you've you've trained yourself. You've learned a lot from the photos, drawing from photos. Yes, I mean I, this is this is I, will, I I always think that this is not a competition. This is not to please anyone. This is just for me. This is fun. And if you and and there's something about uh, how to explain it when you're when you're a kid and you and you draw because all of us uh, uh, draw when we were uh, kids and it's that feeling when you show it to your mom or show it to somebody and they say it is beautiful how it makes you feel how that that thing makes you feel so at the end 
what I want to do is something beautiful. So I, there's something about drawing every day that you have to avoid overall is frustration. If you get frustrated, you won't be able, you don't want to sketch the next day. So if you are not confident about sketching people, for example, as me, because I, 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 I never did before. I mean, I, I was learning here and I needed to post something for that day and I did it from life. I know I will get uh, um, uh, frustrated. I, I, I knew it. So I would take, I, I took a picture and I did it and I started learning from that. And now I'm able to just, if they, if they are still, I mean, I do it when they play, when they play uh, with the PlayStation or when they are reading or when they are on their, on their, on their phone. I, I sketch them in, from real, real life and not from picture, but it, as I say, it's not a competition. You can do it. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's the same feeling. It's, you're doing it. You're observing. You are. It's your handcraft. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Somebody is asking, um, uh, how did you design your own stamp? How, where did you get that stamp? Oh, this is my signature, and I just yeah. get the rub, the rubber part. I get it from a from a stamp uh, shop, just a normal stamp shop. And I what I do get it online. Oh yeah, definitely. What what I do is I I I I, I do the wood part and I, I assemble it all together and I have my handcuffs like a really a special thing, which is for me a special thing. Uh, but you can do it. Actually, I have I have a, a, a one that I, that I uh, bought with it's a retractile uh, one which looks like an office stamp, which I don't use that much. I use it at home, but I have my own made of wood and i know people made of a stone for example i mean you can do it in so many ways yeah um gorgeous sketch but i just want to uh comment on pablo has commented and said sometimes i feel that drawing from a photo is cheating but i know that there's ah. no such thing there is no <laughs> such thing so i know from urban Actually, sketchers, if you're an urban sketcher you have to draw from life when you post it on the social media channels i know but, that but, I, would I mean i mean we could talk about this so many times, so many hours of, of, around of, about it, but uh, there's a, I don't remember the name, but I think it was Tintoretto, which has this gorgeous uh, uh, perspective of, of, of uh, Venice makes in the 16th century, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And they use uh, the Camera Oscura, which is, like the beginning of the of the of the of the of the photo uh the camera uh -huh. they use it to bring an image of what they were seeing into a wall to to just draw over that image and if you think they were cheating they are in El Prado and they are in every single museum and they were cheating. I mean, I don't and think it's there's, there's, yeah, yeah, it, it is Tintoretto. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it is not, it is not. There's so many people, so many important people that did it from photos that use, I, I have this, 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 this guy once in, in a workshop that I was doing in Colombia. And he said, when I saw you the first time in, a, in an Instagram live, and I saw you, you, you were using the pencil. I thought exactly, I, 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 I thought you, you were cheating. And I say, there's people that sketch with a pencil. They don't even use ink. No. Is that cheating? Yeah. Is that cheating? I mean, exactly. it's, it's not. I mean, it's just the way you do it and you can do it. I mean, even, even if you take the picture and you put, uh, um, how do you call the net? over like a square, like lines over the picture. Oh, like um, a grid, some kind of a grid. Like a grid, yeah, you, you, you grid the picture and you grid the paper and you uh, copy that grid in the paper. Is that cheating? I believe it's not. There's so many people who does it. Even if you put, I mean, you project a picture on the paper and you copy it. I mean, it is your hand which who is doing it and it's just, it's just it's your vision. It, it, I mean, it's, it is you. I mean, there's no cheating on this kind of uh, craft. I, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I know 
since I was the communications director for Urban Sketchers International for four years, that you cannot post anything on their social media channels that was drawn from a photo or drawn from your imagination. But you can still, you yourself can still draw from photos if you want. You just don't post them on the Urban Sketchers social media channels. But you, if you want to draw from a photo, that is your business. It's your art. You can do whatever you want and you should do whatever oh, you yeah, want. Oh, yeah, definitely. You should make I lots mean, of art, not just urban sketching. You should make lots of art. If you are inspired to make art with felt, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I, I love the, 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 the urban sketcher project. I, uh, I love to go out and, and sketch outside. Uh, and they have their manifesto, which... Uh, said that you have to do it live, but they have to go back a little bit on pandemic and they draw from a screen from the stream and it was okay. I mean, it didn't happen anything. I mean, just I mean, so it's it's only it's it's a vision, it's their vision, and you can do another one. I mean, of yeah. course, of course. It's, it's like it's like if you get into a contest and they say uh, the contest is for people from 11 to 16 years old and you are 17, you cannot participate. It's still the same thing. I yeah, need to it's, say it's their organization is it's exactly exactly, yeah. but this is not everything. No, so. I mean I personally love to draw from life it's uh, it's way more satisfying for me personally than drawing from a photo but i do draw from photos and uh sometimes and uh but you know it's urban sketching is a is a small part of what is what goes under the umbrella of what is art and uh they are do it in a certain way but they're only doing a small part of a thing there's lots of other yeah, things yeah definitely are art. definitely yeah, yeah. And, and and actually and actually uh, a sketchbook artist uh, it's not an urban sketcher. I mean, not all the uh, sketchbook artists are urban sketchers. Um, there's a there's a huge world around around the the, the, the sketchbooks that is not exactly uh, going outside and sketch from life. Right. Yeah, I know it's true. So let's talk about this gorgeous sketch right here. How is it <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same, the same guy, <laughs> the same, same guy. kid, the 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 the, the page before, uh, when he was turning eighteen. So I did it for him. So he remember how he looked and how he got this uh, nose ring and he his earring and he he was seventeen, and I just want him to remember that. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Yeah. So did you start with the watercolor and then because there's some line on it as well, right? Yes, yeah, it is it is it is line on it. Yeah. And then I just use watercolor. Yeah. Yeah. Just one 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 just just values. It's it's easy for, well, it's not easy to control the technique because water is such a different thing from lines. Yeah. But it's the same, the same concept. Yeah. of the cross hatching it's just layer over layer a little bit more darker or maybe the same one but when you put it on top of the of the previous layer it gets a little bit dark is this ink so or is this watercolor or is this ink no watercolor it is watercolor, watercolor. Yeah. it's a little bit of blue and in, in the in the in the watercolor yeah well this is a beautiful beautiful drawing and Believe me, when Marcel is uh, 65 years old, he's going to look back and say, what? <laughs> well, actually, this one was the first time that he said that he recognized himself on a, on a, on a, on a picture that I made. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to, when he's older, he's going to think, wow, I wish I still looked like that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think uh, this is your last uh, image. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Beautifully. Well, thank Beautifully done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank David. you. Thank oh you. my gosh. I learned thank so you. much. I mean, I started writing these notes and I thought, okay, long lines in hatching. That's really <laughs> important. The Hanko stamp. I didn't know about that. Never, you know, thought I, I knew about it, but um, I realized that's a good idea. And Frank, this is, the, this is, this is, this is the one that I, that I, that I have just, I made the, the wood bar and the rub, the rubber part, I get it from the shop. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's oh, cool. the anchor. And you just carry yeah. that around with you everywhere. 
Yeah, I I just have this thing. Oh yeah. Where I, that 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 I, that I made also. So I put my hand out there, and there are my pencils, and that's what I have, and and the schedule. That's yeah. what I have. I think this was a really great talk today, David, because I think it encouraged a lot of people um, not to feel like they have to fit into this certain definition of what is art to try new things, to do new things, that there's lots of things that don't, you know. That I, actually, actually, I believe that art, it's such a big label that, that we put on things. And sometimes we get scared of it. Uh, I mean, I, I try not to consider myself an artist. And if there is anything artistic on the, the things that I do, actually, is the, the sketchbook. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not one page. It's the whole thing together. And I think that's the, that's the piece of art. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even uh, matter if it's beautiful or not. It's just because it is mine. Yeah. That's, what make it, that's what make it important. Yeah. 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 Cool. Super cool. Well, I thank you so much for sharing your art. When I, start, I first discovered you and started looking through, I thought, oh, my gosh. People need to go to your Instagram uh, account and the the um the you know the name on your Instagram is uh Dava22. Is that right? D yeah, yeah. D-A-V-A yeah. 22. D-A-V-A 22. And if you go there, you will and start following David, you will see some gorgeous examples of his art. We couldn't, I couldn't put his whole Instagram in this. <laughs> but um there are lots of really great examples and uh and i i i loved uh the images that i saw there where what he does is he he sketches he makes a sketch and then he holds it up in front of the thing that he sketched wow wow yeah that, that's that's the thing that brings the instagram that's a different thing between showing uh, the sketches and because i really like when you see the what I, what I was looking yeah 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 yeah, yeah it, they were so beautiful I started looking at them and I'm like okay I need to show people those <laughs> so I <laughs> used it for the use it for the promo but those images where you see the background the context of the thing you're drawing it, it was very very impressive really thank you thank you Brenda so glad you like it really yeah so uh, people I David's gonna have to go but I hope you'll stay on because I have some really exciting announcements david are we going to do a workshop together in spain well definitely i mean actually if, if it was for me i would say yes definitely we just have to see what people say yeah yeah we'll see but we're <laughs> just so that everyone knows we're talking aren't we david yeah yeah we are yeah I, i'm so super hope, excited about it <laughs> yeah i hope we can uh, organize that sometime soon yeah. um so anyway david do you have any last uh, words that you'd like to tell people well, not much that I, that I just said before, but I just uh, like to encourage people just to draw. I mean, and if you see anything that you could you couldn't do, like something very complicated, technique or whatever, and I just said it is just practice. I mean, I swear to God, it is only practice. I mean, yeah. if I show you my first sketches, they literally suck. You know, it's just so bad. I mean, the perspective is all wrong and. But it's just a matter of practice if you want to be uh, good controlling the technique. But if you don't, it's just draw. It's just, it's just a piece of paper. You know, yeah. it's just nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's just marks on paper. Just have fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, David. Thanks for yeah. chatting. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for having me and anytime. And thank everyone for being here and to listen and hope I didn't get to, you know, about talking about to, I don't know, but I hope to enjoy it and hope to see you guys again. Great. Thank you so much, David. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Hey, everyone. Bye I for now. I want you guys to know I'm going to be doing a free demo on Friday, January the 20th, and you need to get your tickets so that you can get admitted to that free demo. And Pat Southern Pierce is going to be teaching in Niagara on the Lake, uh, Canada in September. We have tickets available. And we just launched a new workshop with uh, Kosha Kuna, who's the co-founder of Sketchbook School in Malta.
So she's going to be teaching in Malta next November, and we would love it if you could join us. And I'm super excited to tell you about a new vacation workshop that we just launched uh, to Rome, taught by Hugo Costa. And of course, we're going to do all the fabulous things that you might imagine, sketching the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, Palatine Hill, and visiting the Vatican and sketching the Pantheon and all of these, it's sketching heaven in Rome. But in addition to that, Hugo Costa is a former resident of Rome, and so he's going to take us on an insider tour of all the best places to sketch in Rome. So that's going to be super fun, and that's coming up September 28th to October 2, uh, 2023, and I hope you will join us. And of course, we have organized a vac vacation workshop with the wonderful David Morales. It's going to be held in uh, Granada, Spain, October 24th to 28th. And we're going to have a super great time. Uh, David's going to teach five fabulous uh, art workshops. And we're going to be visiting the cathedral there. We're going to hang out in Alhambra. We're going to visit some cave dwellings. Uh, we're going to take a bus excursion down to the coast and visit the white hilltop villages. We're going to stick our toes in the Mediterranean Sea. We're going to go to a flamenco dance. We have packed this workshop with all kinds of fun and fabulous things to do and to sketch. And I hope you will join us October 24th to 28th. It's going to be super fun. And uh, finally, you're invited to join me for my weekly sketching tutorials called Feed Your Creative Soul. We're going to have a lot of fun sketching together every week and doing exactly what David and I were talking about in our interview today. And that is you're creative, you know you got to feed that creativeness that's in you, and a daily sketching habit is fantastic. I think you should do it. A weekly sketching tutorials are also would be really great for you. So if, if you want to join my weekly sketching tutorials, go to the website and you'll find it there. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad that you came. I really appreciate each one of you. I hope that you'll get out and sketch and you'll feel inspired and you'll know that... Um, sketching is good for you. So have a great week, everybody, and I uh, hope to chat with you sometime soon. Bye for now.